Hello everyone. For this video, we're going to be covering uh, Maya's sculpting tools. Now, uh, digital sculpting is a little bit different than digital modeling, um, as we'll soon see. Uh, we can do subtractive and additive effects where modeling is, no, well, it's a little bit different. Um, usually requiring uh, visual references and that sort of thing. Also, uh, building something up from the scratch is a whole lot different than digital sculpting, as you'll also see. So, uh, let's begin. Uh, first things first, we are going to go under Mesh Tools here, under Sculpting Tools, and we can pull those off. Uh, I think this might be accessible up here, too. Let me check. Uh, there's a Modeling Toolkit, but not the Sculpting Toolkit. All right, so uh, here we are. I'm going to set it kind of off to the side for us, give us a little bit more screen space. Let me move that over as well. All right, so uh, first things first, let's uh, make a plane. I got a keyboard shortcut for it all set up there, but uh, it is not big enough. It doesn't have enough spans. So what we can do here, I'm going to hit Control A. I'm going to hit it twice. Uh, that'll give us uh, the channel box here. And we can click on the inputs for the polyplane. Uh, for starters, uh, well, you know what, let's make this. Um, Let's do 10 by 10, see how big that is. You know, we're going to go a little bit larger. Let's do, uh, let's do 25 by 25. And I'm going to do um, 50 subdivisions by 50 height. All right. There we go. All right. Uh, and so that we can make sure that we can uh, see the individual polygons, uh, we're going to go under shading. We are going to go under wireframe on shaded. We'll click off to the side. That way we see all the little bit of little bitty squares. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to grab my sculpt tool. Actually, if I uh, click on this, it'll give us our tools, our tool setting. Uh, that's not usually attached to the side. Um, let's see, let me show another way of getting to the tool settings. Uh, this is also a good way to get to the tool settings. Just double clicking any one. Of, I think you can click any one of these. All right, so uh, tool settings, we're going to take those, make sure they're docked into the side. Whoa, there they go. All right, so uh, let's grab our sculpt tool and go to work. All right, uh, here we go. Uh, whoops. Sculpt tool. All right, whoa. All right, so for starters, uh, I didn't want to demonstrate it yet, but I already have it on symmetry. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, we'll be using that in just a little bit on a closed form uh, to a much desired effect. All right, so here's our sculpt tool. See how I'm just drawing the surface and it's displacing all of the little bitty squares. Uh, I am going to turn off our grid so that all we get are the little squares on our polygon. All right, so that's worth looking at. Uh, obviously, uh, we could probably make all sorts of things really quickly in this fashion, but if we look underneath, uh, we're going to see that it's all been displaced. So. Now, um, if we go over here, here's our size, and here's our strength attribute. Now, you don't have to go over there to access those. Uh, in order to increase the size of your brush or to decrease the size of your brush, you simply have it selected and hold the B key and drag either left or right, and it'll make it larger for you or smaller. So now we got a real big one. We can move a whole lot of stuff at once. Or we can get a real tiny one. All right, so I'm going to undo all of that stuff there. Uh, let's see. Let's go with a, a larger strength, a larger brush. I think you can see what's happening here. Uh, now we have the invert key. But we can simply invert uh, by hitting control. Oops, actually by holding alt. Uh... Oh, it's still inverting. All right, unclick that. Now if I hit, uh, if I hold control, it'll also do an invert. So build. Or we, or we can knock it back. So if we hit flood here, it would actually apply these settings evenly. To every one of these vertices so if we it just it doesn't do really anything other than move it <clears throat> so now we have spacing down here um, it's at zero 
see, let me make our brush smaller again. Actually, let's do it here. Okay, and uh, to control strength, you uh, do something similar. Uh, you hold up, down the M key, and then you drag it up or down. I think you guys can, can you see the little line? It's protruding. All right, so here we go. So I'm now going to demonstrate the spacing characteristic. Actually, let me make this just a little bit smaller. It'll be a little bit more visible. All right, so uh, currently we're at zero. And now it's at 100. Let's see, let's make it five. Let's make it 500 and see what happens. You see how the dots are being distributed? So in order to decrease that distance, we would just simply drop this further. Let's see, hit control Z, or we just turn spacing off entirely. I think it generally produces even a better line when we're setting. Okay, uh, so we also have build up here. Um, let's see, let me uh, use a larger brush here. Oh, you see how build up do, does very minimal. Oh, hmm. So if you don't want to be as disruptive on your surface, maybe you go with a, a, a larger buildup and then you start moving to a smaller buildup brush. Okay, let's put that at 100. Now, steady stroke is really nice, especially, whoops, let me knock the size back down. I'm holding down B. Now, you see the little arrow? A lot of times uh, we don't have a digital drawing tablet to do the digital sculpting tools. So what we end up doing uh, is using a mouse. Well, let's say you want to do something really straight and very accurate. This is actually a really nice tool because it makes it flow evenly and it gives you a whole lot of control over the line. Let's see, I'm going to hit Control-Z a few times. Let's see if I can write my name. Hmm. Almost. <laughs> um, so uh, something I want you guys to be observ uh, observant of, uh, check this out. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush. Actually, let me, let me, actually, let me decrease it. See, everything is kind of chunky and a little bit, uh, let's see, I'm tr trying to think of the right word. Uh, it's definitely broken up and it's not very even. So what can we do about that? Well, you know what? Uh, if we look up here in our polygon display, uh, now we access that by going display, heads up display, and then going to poly count here. Let's turn it off, we'll turn it back on. <coughs> Woo, sorry about that, guys. All right, turn polygon back on. Now, um, we can see that our object has 2,500 faces. Let me hit Control Z a couple times. Let's get rid of that. All right, so uh, let's see. I think we made this 50 by 50, so the 2500, that makes sense, 50 by 50. All right, um, but we can go back uh, under our channel box. I'm going to hit Control A for it, and we're going to go back to polyplane, and I am going to go uh, 100 by 100. Now, I'm going to use the same brush that we have. I just want you to observe how much smoother uh, the deformation is because there's now 10,000 squares uh, instead of uh, 2,500. Um, not only that, we could actually, let's, uh, let's use the smooth function this time to do it. Okay, so now we have 40,000. Now let's use a sculpting tool. All that extra detail to work on. Um, I suspect you could probably get into the several hundred thousand range, maybe even a million before it starts becoming a real problem. But uh, generally speaking, as an artist and a sculptor, what I would prefer to do is start with something rough and then refine it as, as time goes uh, in the project. So uh, another uh, way of saying that is working from general to specific. So 
So far, we've just been using the sculpt tool, and we have all of these other tools to mess with. Um, let's try the smooth tool. Check it out. Just smoothen, smoothen that area. We'll leave the outer ridge defined. Well, once again, um, everything still applies. Hold down B, make it larger. Hold down M, add strength to it. Uh, let's see. Let's hop, hop, pop our options open. All right, yeah, so strength is at 300. Size is at 1.9. So uh, that's kind of uh, helpful. Okay, something's a little too angular. You want to bring it down. However, uh, something I'd like to point out here, this is a very interesting use. I, and I really like this, uh, the flood option here. You can hit flood, and now it's applying it to everything. So that's pretty handy. All right, uh, I'm gonna go Control Z a little bit. I wanna get back to my 100 by 100 mesh. All right, we're gonna go back to the Sculpt tool. We're not quite done with it yet, I don't think. Um, let's see. So we also have the Fallout here. Let's cover this. All right, I'm gonna do a larger brush. We're still got Steady Stroke on. So check out the side, the profile of that. Actually, you can just check it out here. It looks an awful lot like that. All right, so I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm going to go with a different one this time. And I think you can see that it's actually producing more of a con convex instead of a concave shape. Now, I think this would be even more noticeable maybe if I had a smaller brush. So let's check it out. Yeah, check that out. So that compared to this. And it's simply by adjusting the fall off. Now, we also have stamps here. Let's see. Okay, use stamp. This is Sculpt Tool. Once again, though, uh, we wouldn't be getting nearly as fine of a result if we didn't have the 100 by 100 grid. Um, oh, it's, actually, I think it's even larger than that. Might be like 200 by 200. Yeah, it's probably closer to it. But either way, so uh, under here, you can pick different stamps to use. And uh, once again, you guys, if you have a drawing tablet, this is an absolute uh, divine experience. So I have a drawing tablet. I'm not using it right now. I won't have the screen space that I have to show you everything. Uh, it's kind of getting kind of messy here. I think you get the idea. Once again, there's a lot of things you can do here. I, I don't have enough time in the day to show you all of it. But uh, oh, here, here's the thing for stylus right there, right? In case you have one. All right, so uh, the relax tool, uh, it averages the vertices on the surface without affecting its original shape. Let's see, so let's uh, let's demonstrate that really fast. All right, sculpting tool. Whoa, we must have our stamp on still. Let's get rid of that. You see the relax kind of separates and loosens the vertices. If things are getting really tied up because of too much detail, that could be really handy. So here's the grab tool. And the grab tool, oh, just kind of allows us to grab an area. Let's see, uh, the strength is really low. Let's turn it higher. Uh, see how we can quickly make some volumes. There we go, that didn't take long at all. Uh, also, though, uh, don't forget, uh, by holding control, uh, we go in the opposite direction. Let's see the pinch tool. Hmm. 
Might be easier if we have something uh, uh, different to do. Uh, we, we need some uh, history to, to manipulate, so let's do that right now. Oh. All right, good enough. Okay, so let's see the pinch tool. We can see the vertices uh, come together, but we have uh, the same size and strength. Let's try the strength higher. Whoa. I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush. Just grab the edge and it kind of pinches it together. Let's grab the side and see what happens. Yep, pinch. Once again, though, I think uh, we hold control. It goes in the opposite. That's kind of that's kind of messy. It's kind of bulging, actually. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So uh, let's see. We have our flatten tool. Let's try uh, f putting a wedge on the side here and see how it works. we're on top it's gonna to be really easy whoa I think uh, we could use a larger brush here huh that's interesting yeah this is a flattening brush and once again we also have a flood Oh my gosh, that's awful. All right, so uh, let's see. We have the repeat tool, the spray tool, the foam tool. The foam tool, I think it builds up the surface kind of like a, um, kind of like the sculpt tool does. It's not quite as refined. But obviously, uh, it moves really quickly. Consider we just had a flat plane. We just made this bizarre organic form. Here's the spray tool. So this is a also does the stamping that the sculpt tool does. Let's see. Let's get rid of this whole thing. Let's make our plane again. Control A. Control A. Let's see. Let's go 50 by 50. By 200, by 200, uh, there's our 40,000. Let's try the foam again. It's kind of interesting. All right, so it's tool settings. Oh, sp spacing. Hmm. Okay, that's with zero spacing. Let's increase the size. Huh, it's interesting. It's a little bit more general. All right, so if we hit control, it brings it down. Uh, we have the repeat tool. Now that tends to, uh, it repeats uh, different uh, topographical features. I don't think it's working correctly because we have it so large. So let's go back a little bit. All right, now, ah, uh, now, now it's grabbing features as it goes and replicating them. Uh, the wax tool, oh, that's really subtle. So there's a bunch of other programs that do the same sort of stuff. I, I work in a program called ZBrush that does this as well. This is very similar to their clay buildup tool. create a topographical like, uh, or environment map really quick with this sort of stuff. Oh, uh, let's see, where was the stamp tool? Let's, we're using the wax tool. I wanted to demonstrate the stamp tool. Oh, it's not that, it's the imprint tool. Oh no, that does something different. All right, so stamp, okay, spray tool, stamp, Use stamp. 
pick stamp. We'll go with this funny looking one, see what happens. Whoa. What's the gun? B. Control size. M control strength. That didn't take very long. Wow. Martian landscape. We could procedurally throw some textures on there and make an environment in no time at all. If we hit control, it puts it in the negative. Pretty cool. All right. So uh, we have a whole bunch of other, other ones here for you to play with. Uh, bulge, amplify, uh, knife tool. I think some of these are, so, there's a knife tool. It's kind of self-explanatory. You know, it's not, those are some pretty good canyons, I won't lie. Um, but I'd like to show you how I use this on a regular basis. Let me delete this. I'm going to go uh, to create polygon primitive. I'm going to go to sphere. I'm going to choose the options. All right, let's go with the radius of uh, 25. Um, let's go with 50 by 50 divisions. All right, there we go. So what I like to do, I'm going to activate our symmetry. And I can start sculpting on this. Well, since it's symmetric, oh, it's not, the symmetry is not on. Now I could select symmetry two different ways. I can go up here, but it's also hanging out over in the toolbox. So let's do that, object X. Whoa, there we go. I think the strength's a little bit high. Let's bring that down. I'm just gonna make a character's face really fast. Give him some ears. Some eyes, ah, oh, those aren't very good. I'm gonna to go to the smooth tool. Let me smooth down the areas here a little bit. Looks like he's got a mustache. I'm okay with that, I guess. Ah, oh, let's bring that down. Let's give him some cheeks. Actually, if they're a little larger, it'd be better. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to show you uh, the freeze um, tool. All right, so freeze tool, I just spray on it, it turns blue, right? All right, well, what's actually happening is it's... Uh, uh, if, if you use other programs, uh, you might refer to this as a mask. So I'm going to just spray on here. Actually, you know, before we go any further, uh, I am going to go to Mesh, and I am going to just go to Smooth. And I'm doing it, going to do it again, actually. Okay. Freeze tool now. Ooh. Uh, okay, because I uh, am now using a higher resolution, you can see how it's painting better on the surface. So that's what I was really after. So, all right. So uh, what happens when I now use a sculpt tool on top of the frozen area? I think you get a very good idea. It is not affecting that area, but I'm going to... Increase the size of my brush. All right, so uh, I think to order to unfreeze it, I hit Shift U, and now it's gone. Okay, Control Z, it goes back. But also, I can hit Control Shift I. This is also the Photoshop and um, well, it's the Photoshop command for inverse. Control Shift I. All right, so now we can manipulate the inside of the eye and it would protect that. If we hit control, okay, well we have the sculpt tool, it'll actually go in. Now I'm gonna hit uh, shift U, let's get rid of all of it. I'm gonna go to my freeze tool again. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. Oops. I'm going to hit uh, Control Shift I, select inverse, grab the sculpt tool. You know, what might be better is to use the bulge tool. I'm going to increase the uh, size of my brush. Oh, well. Just want to demonstrate how that could be used. 
Let's use it to, to, to give him a mohawk. All right, freeze tool. Whoops. Uh, shift U, get rid of everything. I'm going to just draw right like that. Okay. Uh, this time, let's go with the sculpt tool. Let's increase the sh well, we need the size larger, but we also need the strength a lot higher. So let's do what we can. Whoa, ah, that is crazy. Uh, not that much. Let's just try like a 30. Control Z, undo that. Whoa. Actually, uh, we meant uh, c Control Shift I. Use the inverse. There we go. Here's our Mohawk. It's not perfect, mind you, but it isn't bad. Let's see, uh, shift U, that'll unfreeze it all. All right, I think that's a pretty good demo, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, have any other uh, questions, make sure you email me. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these to explore. Uh, take your time and have a little bit of fun, guys. Uh, this is a lot more intuitive than what you've been doing, so I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. Thanks, guys.